put it this way, if the kid doesn't want to ride, then he's probably not going to go very far, is he? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And then a crack coach giving the correct information yes. and a desire to learn. And, exactly. And off it goes. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's really the parent's really job. Great. To you know, like, yeah, yeah, I totally wrecked it with Jake sending him. Like, Jake won the Aussie title, like, I think you're 16 when you first turned senior. So he was 17, and by near the end of the season, he turned 18. And he won the Australian Pro Light title. Well, then they then he went to America. Who am I living with, Dad? Oh, I don't know, mate. They're going to pick you up at the airport. Right? Well, that's what ruined his career. Gotcha. Right? Like, he came out first race and was... First Supercross race only at that age, and he was second till the third last corner. Well, that was like his best event. Yeah. Nearly, you know? Yeah. And then living on his own, like he needed mum for a cuddle, he needed dad to kick his ass, he needed people around him who cared, and all that sort of stuff. Instead, he had to cook his own dinner, all that sort of shit. And, so you know, live by himself and stay is. away from his mates because they weren't doing the right thing to help get that good. And, <laughs> you know, so, yeah, so it just all went wrong. Funny stories, stories about him and Jason Lawrence, whatnot. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of funny <laughs> stories about him and, and Robbie Madison's house, and oh, yeah, there's plenty, but you know, he was on his own, and you, I, like, I really appreciate Robbie looking after him. Yeah. You know? And so then you can almost say the evolved version of that, where you've learned and analysed and adapted, would be the Lawrence's selling their house and all yeah, that. Mate, yeah, mate, uh, like, I, uh, that was the whole thing. You, you are their team forever. Mm -hmm. And see how now he's never let anyone step in the way. Yep. Right, and I'm sleeping at their house quite often. They're coming down to my place. We're doing all the schools. So this is, this is after the school talk, sitting on the lounge and rubbing it right in and that. Right, so no one has ever stepped between Darren and his kids. Not it's a, a little, chance. A little bit off topic, but I always get the comment from parents, the kids won't listen to me, so we come to a coach. Mm -hmm. How does Darren get the kids to listen to him no matter what? Even though I'm sure um, he's hard on them, he's telling them what to do. and they just Yeah, I, I, I'm not the ultimate at it. I'm just the ultimate of pushing it. Yeah. Um, but their whole family, um, like the middle brother, too. So that was Jet's playmate. Mm -hmm. uh, Hunter was more work with Darren, right, to get the stuff ready and go do the exercise and that. And then Mum was look after for him. So they had that whole bond of doing the same job all together, and mm -hmm. okay, and a, a lot more fun for Jet. You know, as, as because Hunter had to do more of the work and get things ready and stuff like that. So he wasn't as bored. He could go play while Hunter, Hunter did more of the exercises that I set and all of that sort of stuff and yeah. everything. Like I even, I think I mentioned it last one. I remember uh, Jet saying to me, um, I said, that's not right, Jet. And he said, well, has Hunter got it right yet? And I said, not quite. And he said, well, call me back when he has and I'll copy it. You know, so he had that sort of, being a younger brother, but everyone's in a different situation. Every kid is different. Every parent, the parents know their kids. They yeah. won't listen. Well, maybe the parents doing something wrong. Yeah. You know, and they've got to work out how. Like mine with Matt and Jake, I was, I was, I'm a bit of a prick, you know. So, uh, like with Matt and Jake, it was mate. Uh, I don't want to go motocross training, mate. Let's go in and do some homework. <laughs> Let's get our books out and we'll, you know, we could get a really good future if we go and do some schoolwork. Oh no, Dad, can we go and train on the motorbikes? Oh, okay, son, if we have to. Yeah. Right? You know, like, like so they're asking me to train. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, right. But they're really doing it to get out of homework. You know, so. Tracy Keisha did that with Josh Keisha one time. Yeah, I was down at their house. Yeah, Josh right? didn't want to race, so she yeah. took him to a race and said, right, everyone's going to watch this weekend. Yeah. By race one, he was, no. let's go home and get the bike. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, so. They've just got to put a little bit more time into understanding how to how to work their child. Yeah, so that's you know, more of like a personal. And give it a go. Yes, definitely. It's yeah, yeah. Then. Well, they know them better than you do. Yeah. You know, so so uh, I try and teach the parents. Okay, probably more than I teach the students. Mm -hmm. You know, like the parents are number one. You're their team. Yeah. You know. So. And the parents are somewhat going through like a process of elimination on what's wrong with the riding. And yeah, implementing yeah, that yeah, well. yeah, and learning the sport, looking continually at those four things and learning what will be next, so what will I develop in the rider for what next level, next level, next level, and they're understanding, and they learn to understand the sport, you know, and like, Darren knows more than me now, mm -hmm. right, well, he kept working harder, but 
they'll let him in you nothing. Yeah. Like absolutely nothing. 